You don't have to keep lying. I'm going to leave you out here to starve to death. It will be slow and painful, and once I know you are dead, I will bury you out here, and no one will ever know what happened to you. And with that, she left me tied up in the cabin. Hi there, my name is Cassandra, and I have had to go through quite the ordeal. I had been married to my husband, Eric, for several years. We were introduced to each other through mutual friends, and we instantly fell in love with each other. Things were going really well, and it wasn't long until we started dating and eventually got engaged. We were very happy, but both of us knew that we wanted to wait until we were both properly established in our careers before marriage. He was in school to become an engineer while I was in business school, and spent a lot of time studying the stock market. Soon after we both graduated, Eric was able to find a job with a very large firm. His starting salary was very impressive, but we chose to keep renting the same small apartment so that we could save up and buy a house when we were truly ready. Sadly, I wasn't so lucky though, but I was determined to help out as much as I could, and so I got a job at a restaurant as a server to help with the bills. Around that time, Eric wanted us to introduce each other to our parents. He figured it was way past time for us to do so, and I completely agreed. Although, after I met his parents. I was rather sure that we had made a terrible mistake. Mom and Dad, this is Cassandra, my fiancé. Hello there, Cassandra. It's nice to meet you. Yes, and it's very nice to meet you as well. Hmm. So tell me, Cassandra, where do you work? Well, right now I'm just working at a restaurant, but I have plans to do something much more interesting soon. Really? Eric, is this really the woman that you want to marry? Some sleazy waitress? Mom, Cassandra isn't a sleazy waitress. For your information, she graduated from business school. She's only working as a waitress because she wants to contribute to our bills. With my new job, she could just stay home and do nothing, but that isn't the kind of person that she is. She certainly doesn't sound very impressive to me. She sounds like a freeloader. The rest of the night was much of the same, and by the time that we went home, I hated my future mother-in-law. Eric promised me that her words didn't matter to him, and that he knew that I was going to do great things with my life, and even if I didn't, that he would still love me. His father had been very warm though, and that did make the whole encounter much more bearable at least. After a few months though, I was growing tired of how Eric's mother was treating me. She would call him every other day and bad mouth me to him. She would tell him that I was going to steal all of his money and that he needed to leave me as soon as possible, or else I would leave him broke, penniless, and depressed. It got so bad that he started letting her calls go to voicemail just so that he wouldn't have to listen to her. I was so sick of her constant abuse. It made me feel like such a complete loser. And so I asked Eric if it would be okay if I took some of the money I made from waitressing and invested it into the stock market. He told me that he completely supported me doing so. So after a couple weeks of analyzing several dozen companies, I picked three that had potential and invested my entire paycheck in them. One week later, I had more than doubled my initial investment, and I then took that money and reinvested it into several companies that I liked, and sure enough, the next week I had quadrupled my investment. I began picking more companies and holding them for varying amounts of time. Some I lost money on, but the majority of the them earned me quite a bit of money. Before long, I had made more investing in the stock market than Eric had made in the last two years. We were so excited and Eric was incredibly proud of me. Honey, I knew that you would do well. But I never dreamed that you would do this well so quickly. We have more than enough to buy whatever home that we want. Thank you, Eric. I couldn't have done it without your support, though. Nope. It was all you. You're just a wizard at playing the stock market. It's almost like you're psychic or something. We should call my parents and rub your success in my mother's face. No. Please don't do that. She'll just find a different reason to pick on me. Honestly, your mom just hates me. It is. What it is. It felt terrible admitting that I would never be liked by my future mother-in-law, but I couldn't avoid it. She just refused to ever see me as a good match for her son. The one thing that I did request was that we pick a date and make plans for a wedding. With my investing skills, I earned enough money to completely cover the cost of the wedding, while still putting money aside for our future house as well. At the wedding, Eric's mother stared daggers at me the entire time, and refused to say anything to me. Few months after our wedding, we bought our dream home and moved into it. It was such an amazing house and it was close to Eric's job. 
I had an office built inside the library of the home and I kept investing. We would eventually need more money to cover the costs of the children that we would have, as well as their schooling. Between the money I earned and Eric's salary, we were living quite comfortably. That is, until tragedy struck. I would never have guessed that I would become a widow at the age of 31. But sure enough, Eric was driving home from work one day, and a drunk driver got into a head-on collision with him. The accident was so terrible that both men died instantly. I was so furious. Not only had this stranger killed my husband, but he died, which meant that he wouldn't face any judgment for his crime. It was so infuriating. What made matters worse is that no sooner had my husband was buried and gone, did my mother-in-law began coming around. At first I thought maybe tragedy had made her see the light, and that she was coming around to make sure that I was okay. But of course, that wasn't the case. She will always come around and bully me saying she wants all her son's property. Then one day she came. Well, congratulations. Looks like you got what you wanted. My son is dead and you inherited everything, including this house that he paid for. I guess it must feel really good to be a freeloader and never have to work hard for anything. Oh, will you shove it up your ass? I earned the money that paid for this house. My husband made good money, but it was my skills that paid for this house. I don't believe you. You're lying and I'll make you regret it. Before I even knew what was going on, she rushed towards me and put a cloth up to my face. The second that I began to feel loopy, I knew that she had doused the cloth with chloroform. I couldn't stay awake and I fell asleep. When I woke up, I was tied up in the back of a moving car. Eventually I felt the car stop and Eric's mother opened the trunk and dragged me out of it and into what looked like an abandoned cabin. There, now I'll leave you here to rot while I head back and reclaim my son's house. I always knew that you were useless. I'm only sorry that my son never saw it and died before he could move on and find someone worthy of how amazing he was. Enough. Your son loved me, and I was a great wife to him. I was never a freeloader, in fact. I made more money than him, and I not only paid completely for our wedding, but also for our house, too. He made good money, but I was the breadwinner. Why can't you just accept that I loved your son, and he loved me? You don't have to keep lying. I'm going to leave you out here to starve to death. It will be slow and painful, and once I know you are dead, I will bury you out here, and no one will ever know what happened to you. And with that, she left me tied up in the cabin. For two solid days, I struggled to free myself from my bonds, and every time I heard any noises outside, I would scream and hope that it was a hiker or a hunter. By the time that the third day rolled around, I was losing hope and I began to cry when I heard a car pull up outside. I instantly began to scream, and seconds later, Eric's father burst into the cabin and untied me. As it turned out, his wife had told him that I had run off with all of Eric's money since he was dead. He had found it rather odd that I would leave after the funeral if that had been my intentions, but also that I wouldn't sell the house but leave it behind. He instantly knew that something weird was going on and he began to look for me. At first he checked in with all my friends and family, but then he decided on a hunch to check his wife's old family cabin and that was when he found me. I thanked him so much and the two of us drove back to my home where we found my mother-in-law giving a statement to the police. She was filing for a missing persons report and claiming that I had skipped town. As soon as I saw her, I attacked her and dug my nails into her face. She screamed out in pain and fear and it took two police officers to pull me off of her in spite of the fact that I was weak from days without food or water. Once they pulled me off, I told the police what she had done, which of course she denied. But then my father-in-law stepped up and told them that it was all true. After they heard his statement, they immediately arrested her and dragged her away. The next couple of weeks were a bit of a blur as it took me a while to recover from the ordeal. Between the days without food and having only lost my husband a short time before that, I was a mess. However, in spite of that, my mother-in-law was sentenced to 20 years in prison. As if that wasn't enough, her husband divorced her and told her that she had disgraced their son's memory by behaving like a crazy person. From what I hear, she gets into fights regularly in prison and is hated. If she manages to survive for the next 20 years in prison, I would be surprised. As for my father-in-law. Well, he was pretty broken up about what had happened, but he did eventually recover and I put my skills to good use and helped him out by tripling the amount of money he had in his retirement fund. Helping him ensure that he would have whatever money he would ever need to stay happy, healthy, and comfortable. It was the least I could do. After all, he did save my life. And me, 
Well, it's taken me some time to process everything that happened, but I think I'm ready to get out there and start dating again. I don't know if I'll find anyone as amazing as my husband, but I know that he wouldn't want me to be alone. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe and leave a comment down below saying I subscribed and we will try our best to reply to your comment.